hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and this is Nigel. I tried to pop, prop him up so you guys could see him. And then he gets off of the booster seat that I just gave him. Working with divas is exhausting. Get comfortable. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Book Community where I try to keep you abreast of the goings on um, in the bookish community. It's been a while, I'm taking a break. It's been wonderful. It's like a vacation, refreshing. I went to Vienna and Budapest by myself. Um, it was lovely. Both cities are gorgeous. I got to see a friend from college. Got to go to so many bookstores. Mm, God bless. So we are back. We're getting to work. Well, I'm getting to work. Hey, can you sit down, please? And of course, there's been a lot going on. I'm not going to be able to catch you up on everything in this video. It would be like three. Uh, it would be way too long. Uh, for me to edit. I'm sure some of you would watch it, but I'm going to try to keep it under an hour and then things will just have to roll over into the next video. Some things just won't, you know. Can you sit down, please? Sir! I tried to give him a booster seat and now he just wants to... I really don't have time for you. Anyway, but before we get into the mess, the shenantics, we need to thank today's sponsor, which is Surfshark. So I've mentioned Surfshark before. They are a VPN virtual private network that I personally use and have used since I've lived abroad in Sicily because a girl needs her TV, right? And so whether you're in America or maybe you're in a, a different country outside of America and you wanna watch certain programs that are not available, you need a virtual private network or a VPN. And Surfshark to me is amazing because one account can work on multiple devices. So we have one in this house but both Andrew and I use it. It also helps when I was traveling to Vienna and Budapest and because being outside of the U.S. is so stingy I couldn't watch The Nanny on HBO Max or I couldn't even get HBO Max unless I had a VPN. So there's that to me is the most important reason to get a VPN but there's other you know reasons like they don't hold on to your data they protect your IP address especially if you're like out in public on a public Wi-Fi network those can be a little shady so having a VPN on is a way to protect you and your information you can get notified if your email is hacked into I mean if you're old like me and you want to listen to Pandora and it's not available then this is also perfect. So many benefits to using Surfshark and for you, because I love y'all. If you use my code, which is just my last name, Owens, O-W-E-N-S, you, you get 83% off and then three months free. 83% off, it's already relatively cheap in my opinion, especially if you do um, like in bulk, if you do six months, 12 months, a year, 83% off and then three free months. Just gotta use my code OWENS. It'll be linked below uh, directly to the website if you wanna sign up and I'll have my code listed there. But I'm just saying, you want to be protected, all that good stuff when you oot in a boot or at home and you're trying to watch all of the things, all of the networks, you need you a VPN. So thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, but let's get to the tea, shall we? Do you see this dog? Hi Joel, the people can't see you. I tried to make him a booster seat, but he just sleep. No help. So very good. I wanted to mention because I'm catching up on my watch later and my boo thing, don't look at my trash. My boo thing, Steph at Stephanie Bookish is so close to 1K when I just was watching her video. It was like, like nine, she was at like 925 subscribers. So y'all should subscribe to Steph because she is great content. I love her vlogs, the vibe, mm, excellent. Even though she's always making matcha and trying to tell me that matcha does not taste like grass, it's fine. I love her. We've followed each other for years and been friends for years on Instagram and just, Glad that more people are seeing her content. She deserves way more than 1K, but let's at least get her there as a first step. I'm gonna have it linked down below, but yay! Almost to 1K for Steph. Okay, I made a little notes, and when I was writing down all of the things, I was like, oh, that's way too much for one video. So some of them are gonna have to roll over to next week or the next video, whenever that is. I'm trying to give myself more space to do other videos that I want to do. Um, and so tea might not be every week. They may be back to back. It might be every two weeks. You know, there's always gonna be a video on Tuesday. So <laughs> just know that. This first thing, I didn't see a lot of conversation about it on Twitter, but I bookmarked it just because I thought, 
it was great. So this person said, is why a fantasy oversaturated or have pubs stubbornly insisted on mainly pushing identical stories again and again while readers lose interest and the heavy hitting authors leave the genre and still they do not consider getting weird or God forbid giving sci-fi a fighting chance. But I specialize in adult science fiction fantasy anyway and that's thriving and stuff full of talent so y'all stay safe out there. <laughs> bloop that's it that's the tweet so before i've said this before because it keeps happening but in the book community online everything is cyclical we'll talk about something it never gets resolved and then everyone's too quiet and then it comes back up again and i want to know who is behind it like what account starts the discourse over and over again i would love to know but this one was about book piracy which we've talked about many times before i again i don't know where it started and i would just love to know who is the catalyst for these conversations but anyway there were so many tweets i'm sure you saw them covered um, on twitter so many people chimed in readers authors and it there's never an answer there's no solution unless you're talking about taking down huge governments and systems because essentially authors are like don't pirate books because you're stealing you're taking my livelihood you're taking food out of my pocket especially if you're not a you know a new york times bestseller or you know author who got a huge advance then they are you know you feel like someone's stealing directly from you readers and it is primarily international readers and they have every right to say this are like we don't have great access to books so what do you expect us to do of course there's some people who are like well books are a luxury so if you can't afford it don't read it which is very rude and so there's always this discourse going on and then there's always the well if you can't afford it just use a library which sounds great right especially if you're in america but even in america every library system is not uh well funded or someone may not be near a well-funded library system and then you're just thinking about america you're not thinking about international readers who don't all have access to a library or their libraries don't have the books that they want to read maybe they haven't been um or you know their markets haven't picked them up so many reasons it's a very nuanced conversation as are much things <laughs> on the internet and especially on the book internet when people like to put them in a black and white category like you either buy it or you don't read it like that's it or you get it from a library or you don't read it and it's just a very complicated um, conversation because at the end of the day the problem is publishing and the problem is publishing <laughs> and then governments in certain areas whether that's national or local that aren't putting funds into systems like libraries so that people could have access to a well-funded library and Ashley at Bookish Realm made a wonderful video on this because she is a librarian and I will link that video down below because you should watch that just talking about libraries and expanding more on libraries are not just a place that holds books they're not just like a warehouse for books they have every book ever published like they always have every book every system is going to be different um, based on the county maybe and maybe this county has more you know uh not safe for work titles and maybe this county has less so every library is not the same they're not funded the same they're very different so please watch her video so a lot of those tweets were falling on two sides i did see some that were a little bit outside of that one that was can i remind everyone the enemy is not author who can't pay rent or a person in the global south about book access but capitalism and an industry throwing all the chips in on a model that doesn't sustain the people creating its content and they posted a screenshot um that was from last fall about penguin random house buying simon and schuster for 2.175 billion dollars right it's publishing publishing at the top has all the money it's they're not trickling it down or whatever you want to call it to everyone equitably so some authors are getting paid huge six-figure advances and other authors aren't so maybe people you know like cassandra claire whatever don't aren't going to be affected if a bunch of people are pirating their book instead of buying it but someone who is a mid-list um down to i don't is there do they call it low list? That sounds terrible. Midlist author or indie author, self-published, whatever author are definitely going to feel that more than someone who is like a super popular author with tons of books out there and they're not hurting. Am I saying you should still pirate books from like rich authors? I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm also saying that people should be able to access books. Like reading, 
obviously you're watching this most likely you're a reader this is booktube reading is our life like i love reading and i can't imagine not being able to have the availability and luckily i am very fortunate that i uh, growing up had great access to a library and it was really close to where we lived because my parents couldn't afford to buy me all the books that i wanted to read but i could go to the library had a library at my school had a good library in my community and then as an adult same thing i had my college library i've always had access to good libraries and then got older was able to actually afford buying books obviously but everyone is not so fortunate and everyone deserves to read a book i just i literally can't imagine saying you can't afford it you don't deserve to read it that's awful and again not taking in the bigger top the bigger the bigger issue publishing <laughs> and if you want to go further than that governments and not funding things like they should instead of putting things into I don't know oil and whatever and not funding libraries or whatever other countries put money into is never the things that people actually need <sighs> that's a different video we're not here to talk about that today but just wanted to say that conversation was repeated again there were just two sides of the story and nothing was resolved because we can't resolve it but we can at least acknowledge why some people would have to resort to pirating books instead of making them feel bad about circumstances beyond their control and i know i really didn't share a lot of tweets and it's because they're just kind of saying the same thing they say over and all they say over and over and so i mean you could just go look on twitter if you have been on the bookish internet for any amount of time you've seen this conversation and so i did want to share some points from this book riot article though that was titled book pirates buy more books and other unintuitive book piracy facts so of course it's talking about book twitter booktube or the bookish internet in general long enough you know that there are some perennial discussions can you separate the art from the artist how should you address diversity in your reading and of course what are the ethics of book piracy which is illegally downloading books so they talked about there was a survey last year that surveyed 4,000 u.s americans funded in part by the american library association it comprised entirely of people who engaged with the book in some way in the last year either by reading it gifting it buying it or using it for research etc the survey ended up with tons of fascinating information that is well worth diving into but i wanted to direct your attention to a section that immediately got my antennae up titled pirates buy more books in the general survey population surprisingly pirates avidly buy books the survey shares 14.4 percent of respondents admitted to engaging in book piracy they are younger than the average survey population and more of them are men and people of color but the most unifying trait they have is the book pirates are avid readers and they buy more books than the average respondent compared to the general survey population a higher percentage of book pirates during covid are buying more ebooks audiobooks and print books they are also more likely than general survey respondents to buy more books in multiple formats 41.5 percent do during the pandemic book pirates also increased their purchasing of newspapers and magazine subscriptions they are also more likely to be library power users 77.2 own a library card and they borrow more than average survey population including ebooks audiobooks and print books book pirates often use the library for discovering books that they go on to purchase 58.4 percent of pirates bought a book at the bookstore that they first discovered at the library 54.3% of pirates bought a book online that they first found in the library compared to 35.9% of the general survey population. Many turn to pirating books when they aren't available at the library, especially Gen Z responded. And of course, people are talking about the United States of America in this because those are the people that they sampled. And so they said um, this took place in the US with so the arguments about book piracy being justified in the global south and communities without access to other means of reading don't apply here. These are also people who, for the most part, don't lack access to a library. They use them frequently. They're also not impoverished. They often buy books in multiple formats and they buy more books than the average reader. On the other hand, that also means they're not thieves who refuse to ever give publishers money. The survey suggests that book pirates are actual, absolutely willing to purchase if they believe the value is worth it and so obviously that's not everybody and they only that was a, a, a poll of 4,000 people but I know that there are people who can afford and have the means to do pirate books and there are people who don't have the means to pirate books so again the conversation is not simple also publishers are the root of our problem and it should just really stop being please stop stealing from me or just go use your library like i don't we've talked about this so many times i don't understand how that argument keeps coming up but that's all i'm going to say about this here because again it's a tired topic important but tired so this next conversation is a mess <laughs> but so someone sent me 
a post from Jennifer L. Armentrout, who I will continue to refer to as JLA because I'm not going to say the whole name. I keep tripping up over it. Send me a post by JLA on Instagram and the post reads, I wrote Poppy because I wanted to see someone sort of like me, someone who could kick ass and change the world all while doing so with a big ass, thick thighs and soft belly and be seen as beautiful. I write most of my characters like this and I'm not nearly the first to write a character like this and never have I regretted it. But after what I saw tonight, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm not always thrilled to see how she's depicted. That doesn't mean the talent and artwork is any less beautiful. That doesn't mean I don't have the grace and kindness to understand that people don't always interpret things the same. That doesn't mean the way Poppy is depicted is somehow lost or changed. That doesn't mean I'm going to tell people how they should see her since size is not universal. I know how she looks. You know how she looks. The vast majority knows that cannot be taken away. Words can be interpreted and perceived a hundred different ways. Words will be misinterpreted and misperceived a hundred different ways. Still, words are powerful. They can educate and heal. They can build bridges. They can better the world. They can also cut deep into someone. They can also destroy what we're trying to accomplish. What Poppy represents to many of us is important, but I don't know why as a community, we struggle with addressing things in a manner that doesn't always end up in behavior that is both mentally and emotionally damaging. Some of the things I've seen tonight directing at others have broken my little, have broken my heart a little. This is not how we make change. This is not how we educate. This is not how I ever want anyone acting or reacting based on anything I've created. We want people to be better, to do better. We need to try starting with ourselves first because this isn't it. And they were like, do you know what this is about? And I was like, I sure don't, but I will find out. <laughs> and so I messaged my friend. Thank you so much, friend. You know who you are. <laughs> who gave me the lowdown on what was happening and sent me uh, some accounts and screenshots. So essentially, JLA is the author of From Blood and Ash, the super popular fantasy romance series, and the main female character's name is Poppy. So JLA, I haven't read the books, but from my understanding of talking to my friend and a few other people who have read the books, Poppy is described as curvy, like not stick thin she's curvy you know maybe a little softer belly not super you know not like six pack abs but also athletic so some i will say the majority of the art that i have seen from for for from blood and ash poppy is relatively you know a, a small a straight size thinner girl I've seen a few that maybe her boobs are bigger, maybe her butt's a little bigger, but her waist is still pretty small. So the the anger from this post came from a account that does like fan art, a court of books and family, I think is what it's called, commissioned an art, uh, a piece of art for Poppy. And people got mad because they said that it was fat washing, skinny washing. Is that what they call it? Skinny washing. The character this is not the first art commissioned of poppy but for some reason people went after this creator because of the art she had commissioned for Poppy, and it turned nasty really quickly so i'll have i'll have the art the original one here and this is what she had commissioned now i don't know if the artist read from blood nash but this is the art for poppy and so talking to various people, I got kind of mixed um, feedback on what they thought Poppy looked like, because some were like, yeah, she's described as curvy, but you know, that can be interpreted in multiple ways. I don't know if that just means like, you know, curvy hips, bigger boobs, or someone else was like, well, I envisioned her more, you know, size 12, size 14, which obviously is sizing in the US. Again, sizing is trash and never universal. It's like, so maybe I envisioned her with more stomach and more arms. And so it just varies because just like JLA's post said, you read something and you interpret it your own way based on your own experiences, how your mind works, blah, 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 blah. So people were pissed about this art. And so, I mean, your feelings are valid to be upset about a piece of art and maybe you're like, oh, that's not how I saw her. But it turned into you're erasing everything about Poppy and this is like literally a crime against humanity and the stories and the rants like I don't even have time to go through all of the screenshots that I have from stories that were posted from people who are upset about this and again not to take away from their feelings you're valid in what you feel but the way the 
the anger that was put out there, especially to this creator who commissioned the art, I don't think was justified. And JLA was referencing like, you know, there's, of course, I wrote Poppy to be this way. I see her this way, but art has been different ways and whatever. But like, I don't want this to cause, use it as a reason for us to like bully other people in the community so, so much and so forth so on and so forth so i'm gonna just read you some of these things i find it crazy how jla is like oh yeah poppy is plus size but then goes on to say that any interpretation of her is okay um first off major red flag there you cannot claim you have body representation or any representation in your books and then go and support artists that inherently strip that rep away in their art i.e saying castile is a person of color but sharing and liking art of him that is incredibly whitewashed seeing poppy is plus size but sharing and liking art of her that is incredibly thin i understand you want to support your fans and readers but as an author you have a responsibility to make sure you are looking after the fans who saw themselves in these characters and felt represented it seems hypocritical to go back on that and support work that diminishes a huge part of these characters authors need to a be better when it comes to character description so problems of misinformation do not arise or b defend your characters and your work and call out the problematic issues in your community and let people know it will not be tolerated because whitewashing and skinny washing should never be tolerated it is no longer a matter of personal interpretation it has now become a matter of persons internal biases directing their image of particular character to fit the societal standards how being white is the standard for books and lighter skin tones are preferred over darker skin tones and slimmer bodies are preferred preferred over larger bodies and the person who shared this said this 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 you sh uh you said so eloquently what i've been thinking i'm so happy jla and El and lee bardugo not only write fat characters but they simply said they are fat but then both of these authors still support share like art of skinny nina and skinny poppy why lee promised not to let nina get skinny watched in the tv show and then said nothing when that's exactly what happened it's time for authors to step up and de defend the diversity they claim to represent or you are still a part of the problem and so like I struggle because I I understand the sentiment right especially when it comes to like whitewashing when a, a character is explicitly described as darker skinned or as you know a person uh, of some or black around some ethnicity and then someone does the art white and you're like excuse me so again I understand this one wasn't as bad as some of the other ones and I understand that but a few things it's saying that I, they said I find it crazy how JLA is like oh yeah Poppy is plus size and this is another thing with how society has fucked us all up with sizing especially in the US um with women's sizes they're so stupid with the zero two four six and what is considered plus size and what isn't because there's like I from things I've read recently there's more like straight size so like zero to eight maybe or zero to ten mm, maybe zero to eight mid size like eight to fourteen eight to sixteen and then like eight, 16 plus to be plus size but that's the problem some people's minds think a 10 is a plus size and then other people are like no an 18 is a plus size so then your what you think of as plus size is different that's that goes with the actress who plays Nina in the the Grishaverse adaptation is that she's not I don't think she's super small I haven't watched the show yet but I've seen pictures of him she, she's not like a two or a four but she's also not a 16 so like everyone's interpretations or what they thought when they read the book of a character are not going to be exactly the same and so that leads to this and so again I think it's valid but I don't know like I think it's valid I love books you get attached to characters in certain worlds especially when you see yourself represented and especially when you are not usually represented in media like when you finally see a black girl in a fantasy book or you there is a plus size character written I understand being like I'm finally seeing myself and then when you get artwork of that it doesn't look like what you wanted it to like this person also talks about just like kind of society's beauty standards and everything is unrealistic which is true and I think there's a point to be made again I have not read the book but I've heard just some of the terms used to describe Poppy and so I feel like though if you want to make it a point to say explicitly in the text that you have a plus size character to maybe describe it that way and maybe she only did certain words that could be kind of ambiguous for a reason and maybe she didn't I don't know but curvy could be interpreted so many ways curvy someone could think belly and booty boobies whatever some people might take I mean 
you can look at a Kardashian and call them curvy, but that's also boobs, a fake butt, and then they have a super small waist. I mean, those are curves, technically, but I don't know. I just feel like if it's not, it's those ambiguous things and it happens in all kinds of fandoms and arguments between fans like this character is this color and this character is this color and this size and this but it's like when it's not explicitly like an, a perfect line for line um description of the character it leads it leaves a lot to the artist for interpretation and that leads to things like this so then people were not only upset about the art, which again, I don't understand because this was not the first art commissioned about Poppy. They just got upset about this one. And there's ones where Poppy is even thinner, like her arms look smaller, but I don't know, this is what they chose to be upset about. But then they got upset about JLA because then I guess she posted, this looks like it was on Facebook maybe. And she said, so there's been a lot of talk about Poppy's body recently. Is she thin, slender, curvy, but not fat, plus size or plump? And I wanted to chat real quick about Poppy and about how we, mostly women, talk about our bodies because some of the conversation surrounding this is probably making a lot of people uncomfortable. So is Poppy thin? No. The vast majority of my female characters are either average weight, that ain't thin, or would be considered plus size by traditional weight size standards, which spoiler alert, would be considered fat. But people's own minds create the character and sometimes it doesn't matter how blunt you are in a description. The reader sees what they want to see. It's like when you've written people of color, but in a reading, reader's mind, that character is as white as freshly fallen snow, cough, Kieran, cough, Castile, because I don't know any super white folks with bronze or golden skin. But with a female's weight, I've noticed something. In a lot of our minds, we believe for Poppy to be beautiful and wanted by Castile, then she must be thin or have the perfect, super impossible hourglass shape, like a few images I've seen that got me looking at the background were photoshopping you know, curvy, but not fat. Let's forever remove that phrase curvy, but not fat from our language because for starters, it's basically saying one is beautiful and one is not, but also because curves are fat. That's literally what makes the curves fat. Fat accumulating in the hips, thighs and breasts, fat, lots of fat. That ain't bones and muscles creating those curves and I will die on that hill. We've come up with a lot of other words for fat, thick, plump, plus size, curvy, it's just fucking fat, y'all. Some are blessed genetically with that, and others get it from cupcakes and bacon, and let's be real, implants and strategic surgery can do it too. And if that's how you got what you want, then more power to you. Speaking of food, having food restricted doesn't make everyone thin. The same goes for physical activity. And while I'm at it, let's never use Marilyn Monroe as an example of curvy and how much beauty standards have changed. Y'all, that was woman's weight was between 118 and 140 at 5'5", a goddamn size 810 at her highest. Bones and muscles are beautiful, thin is beautiful, being slender is beautiful, being curvy and fat is beautiful, being fat is beautiful, having flawless skin is beautiful, having scars is beautiful, and yes, poppy scars are noticeable. She would be considered disfigured by most standards, but she is still beautiful and desirable. I don't write physically flawless female characters because like Queen Eliana said, the most beautiful things in all the kingdoms often have jagged and uneven lines, scars which intensify the beauty in intricate ways our eyes nor our minds can detect or even begin to understand. Without them, they would just be common and ordinary like all the other smoothly cut diamonds you can find anywhere you look. Beauty, my sweet child, is often broken and barbed and always unexpected. In closing, if you see Poppy as thin, that's okay. You do you. If you see her as curvy and fat, that's okay. You do you. And in real life, if you're thin and healthy, you're beautiful. And if you're thin and want to be larger, you can do that and be beautiful. And if you're fat and happy that way, you're beautiful. And if you're fat and you want to be smaller, that is your damn right to be that too. And be beautiful. Do not let someone else's standards or body issues or choices hijack yours. Fat shamers are as equally annoying, obnoxious, and dangerous as the thin shamers. At the end of the day, be healthy. And healthy is not something anyone can judge on looks alone. Then people were upset at that statement because this screenshot says, so is Poppy skinny or what? Because by blatantly saying you don't care if people draw her as skinny because fan art is their own interpretation, it becomes very confusing to everyone reading. And if she isn't skinny and you're letting people draw her like she is, you're erasing your own representation. If you pick five people who've read your book and they all have completely different images of her in their head, that shows such bad writing on your part because no one look, knows what your character actually looks like. You can't say, okay, one person can see Poppy as skinny and another can see her as plus size and still claim points for plus size representation that isn't representation that's I'm going to have this character that can be plus size rep if you want but she can also be skinny but she can also be plus size people's idea of size is not universal you're right it's not but the art you posted is very clearly skinny no matter your idea of size there is no way that size can be interpreted as not skinny 
Furthermore, can you tell I'm a teeny bit riled up? Interpretations are for what shade of red a character's hair is, not their whole body type. You can't leave the, all that up to interpretation. We're practically writing the character for you that way. Also, why do you think these people interpret Poppy as skinny? Do you seriously think if this was the same way around, you'd have these same people interpreting her as not skinny? They interpret her as not skinny because they don't want a badass main character that isn't skinny. They want her to have a tiny waist and small thighs because that's the only way they see a protagonist. These people go to the ends of the earth to defend why they see her as skinny, but I can promise you it would never be the other way around. So <laughs> these, ooh, Coolio. <sighs> okay, but lastly on this, I'm gonna share the ones that were like directly attacking the shop because I don't feel like I feel like these are valid conversations and then also I'm not gonna say not but mm, I don't know I feel like these are valid conversations and topics but how much energy you're willing to expend on a fictional character I don't know I don't know how to say what I, I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say but this one person was like I'm in a mood today y'all I swear I'm ready to actually cancel someone right now and that person is Alex from A Court of Books and Family and I already know I'll be getting hate for this but I don't care I need to stand up for my friends who I won't name because anonymity is a thing I respect but I refuse to be silent about this this is in regards to that poppy art that was commissioned for her shop you know the plus size main character of from Blood and Ash series by Jennifer Armentrout who wasn't drawn plus size Jalea specifically come out to say that Poppy is plus size, which you would think would be end all be all from coming coming from the creator. But apparently we get to interpret people as either fat or skinny, despite what the author says, not like they would know or anything. And even if Alex could claim ignorance on the subject, which we all know has been talked about since all the special editions for the series have been premiering their art for it, she should actually be listening to people instead of just being stubborn or not willing to listen and understand. Alex and her shop have been problematic for a while and we all just let it slide, but she hurt one of my friends with her words and unwillingness to listen and learn and I won't stand for it. Gabrielle's art is always gorgeous and I'm not calling her out. As the shop owner, Alex needs to take responsibility for the items being sold in her shop. If it's not accurate, she needs to fix it or at least allow a conversation for it. And then they shared another story from someone. Um, why is the idea of someone who looks like me, who has roles, who is plus size, not accepted as fantasy art in the bookstagram and art community? Why are Poppy and Nina skinny washed over and over again? I'm in tears, tears over this. People are saying that JLA said you can picture Poppy however you want. Why is the overwhelming majority of our community constantly picturing her as skinny and depicting her as so? As if there aren't enough skinny heroines in fantasy novels. We can't have a couple. Do you see how unhealthy that is? You're essentially saying it's unbelievable. You're telling me I don't matter. You're telling me I'm not desirable. You're telling me I can't be a badass like the queens Poppy and Nina are. I started my account in October 2019 because of A Court of Books and Family and the community of support for the shop. I rep for almost a year and supported the shop so much. I consider the owner a friend and now I'm just left on red. I will not stand by and be silent. I'm hurt. That last story was from the friend hurt by all this and I could feel her pain like it's my own. Stop skinny washing plus size characters, period. Imagine if a character was Indian, for example, and someone drew them as white or black, but we accept the artist saying it's how I interpret the character. Hello, no, it would be unacceptable, yet people feel okay about interpreting plus size character as skinny. You can't have it both ways. We can't stand up for one thing and then erase another. And so it just keeps going. And lastly, a few things. We're just asking for inclusivity. Is it so hard? I know I can always do better. I'm always trying to learn and listen and learn. And I may regret the things I said later, but I'll never regret standing up for a marginalized group of people, especially when it's happening right in front of me and to the person I care about. And so luckily they did clarify returning to this because in truth, I was mad at using race for my argument and narrative and that's not okay. This issue is more nuanced than straight comparisons like this and I apologize for not seeing that fully. No one can change their skin color while plus size people can have the potential to lose weight depending on their circumstances and beauty standards are always evolving. The point that got lost here is being comfortable in your own skin. So are, no matter who you are. So I'm glad they cleared that up because it was like, oh, you're getting a, it's a bit extreme. Like it's still important. And the way that fat people are treated is not okay. But the, the race comparison, it just was a lot. And so I'm very, again, this is a topic that, uh, this is a nuanced topic, right? There's not like at the end of the day, this person is wrong and this person is right. No. Uh, so I would just love to know y'all's feelings on like, do you think, because I feel like if you want to i do agree with the like if you want to claim a certain type of re representation you put it in the text right it's like later on tweeting that a character is 
is queer if you didn't put that in the text v schwab um or just certain and then people are like oh my god my queen this happened multiple times right like where authors come out later and they're like oh this person was actually this but they didn't put it in the story maybe you did pick up hints but they didn't like put it in the text so i just would like to know how y'all feel about this with the, the the argument with poppy size i do think it got taken too far like at the end of the day it is a fictional character and like you don't need to be trying to cancel someone or like the the argument and uh, the um, harassment on instagram and i know the shop owner did go i think on an ig live to try to talk about it and i think that she's already had the art recommissioned to make poppy a bigger girl so i don't know so the art has been updated the new one is on the left side and the original is on the right so poppy's face is a bit fuller and her arms, um, like her clavicle and like the muscle vein in her neck isn't as prominent. Her thighs, um, I don't know if they're bigger, but it's, I think that's meant to be like stretch marks. So this is the updated art. I don't know. I haven't seen any response or anything about it, but hopefully this is more what people envisioned. Oh, also, did I say her waist? Her waist is uh, not as small. So there it is. I still think these are important conversations to have, especially with just representation overall in media, especially fat representation, good fat representation in media. So that includes books. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's a lot. So I would just love to hear um, your opinions down below. I'm sure you're going to share them with me. And that is that. Oh my god, I forgot quickly because I mentioned this in a video months ago. I don't know, maybe it was even last year because there was a book that was, I think being pitched or it hadn't come out yet. And it's called Irreversible Damage, The Transgender Craze Seducing Our Daughters by Abigail Schreier. It did come out. So it did come out last June, 2020. And it is an exploration of a mystery. Why in the last decade has the diagnosis gender dysphoria transformed from a transformed from a vanishingly rare affliction, applying most exclusively to boys and men, to an epidemic among teenage girls? Author Abigail Schreier presents shocking statistics and stories from real families to show that America and the West have become fertile ground for a transgender craze that has nothing to do with real gender dysphoria and everything to do with our cultural frailty. Teenage girls are taking courses of testosterone and disfiguring their bodies. Parents are undermined, experts are over relied upon, dissenters in science and medicine are intimidated, free speech truckles under renewed attack, socialized medicine bears hidden consequences, and an intersectional era has arisen in which the desire to escape a dominant identity encourages individuals to take cover in victim groups. Every person who has ever had a skeptical thought about the sudden rush towards a non-binary future but been afraid to express it, this book is for you. So I can't remember, I think maybe it came out last summer and I think people were mad that Target was carrying it and I think Target pulled it at least from like their uh, like in store. I think it was still being sold online. But this someone uh, posted in uh, my Discord and they said, so American Booksellers Association, ABA, sends out like a, a box of books, I think to like bookstores um, for things, you know, that are hot in the streets was popping that to promote and the person shared a tweet and it says they tweeted at aba i'm seething i was excited to open our july white box and then the first book i pulled out is irreversible damage do you know how that feels as a trans bookseller and book buyer it's not even a new title so it really caught me in the gut do better so the American Booksellers Association is also the ones who were in charge of that indie booksellers list that had the, instead of having the book Blackout by Danielle Clayton, Angie Thomas, Nick Stone, all of those authors pictured on the list, they had a cover of Blackout by Candace Owens. And so in their newsletter, it's saying, Dear members, we, the directors of the ABA board, are angry and horrified by two equally harmful actions of the organization over the past week. On July 7th, the ABA committed a racist act by posting the cover of a right-wing extremist book instead of the cover for the best-selling book Blackout by Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Yoon. On July 14th, the ABA committed a dangerous anti-trans act by including a virulent anti-trans book in the July ABA box mailing. There are no apologies and no amount of explanations that are sufficient or satisfactory. You damn right. 
These incidents harmed booksellers, ABA board members, and ABA staff who identify as LGBTQIA+, and or Black Indigenous people of color, as well as the wider community. They also add to a toxic culture overall. We are not the ABA of two years ago. These actions are anti-ethical to the values we are working to promote in our organization under the strong leadership of our CEO, Allison Hill, and COO, Joy Dallanegra Sanger. This is not acceptable behavior and goes against the bylaws change changes instituted last year. This is evidence of systemic problems and we support the staff and we will work to do what's necessary to root out institutional failures and biases. We hold ourselves accountable and we will be transparent as we move through this pop process. This cannot happen again. You goddamn right. But how? The Neither of these things are accidents. I don't believe it. I do not believe it because you have access with the book mix up mix up you have access to the book and its authors and then you saw this book with one author and you put that up unacceptable and then this once again not a new title these are supposed to be new titles this came out last year and it somehow ended up in the the book somehow ended up in the boxes that you mail out suspicious or as Bailey Sarah would say suspicious I don't believe it was accidental and I hope they get to the root of this problem because it's disgusting and they need to get it together they need to get it together. Wow, I can't believe, I'm glad I was looking through my screenshots because that, it's not even messy. That's, yeah, it's hateful, it's racist, it's anti, it's anti, it's just terrible, it's everything. Like even the word, you know I love to call everything ghetto and raggedy and that, that doesn't even cover it, it's trifling. We're already at 47 minutes, okay. Okay, we're nearing the end, I'm sorry. Last thing I wanted to uh, cover is I don't always call cover everything that happens with romance. I would like to shout out Izzy from Happy For Now. She uh, reads way more romance than me, is deeper in romance landier than I am. And she basically does a romance landia monthly wrap up. That's like a romance version of book community, but it's just once a month. So you should definitely check her out and subscribe to her so you can keep up with all of that because I can't keep up with everything from romance landia. Cause again, I'm not that deep. I don't see everything, but some things I do see and I'll share it here. But I'll have her channel listed down below so that you can check her out. And I mean, she does read outside of romance. So she does reading blogs, lots of lots of great content. Go watch Izzy, support Izzy. We love to see it. People haven't been able to see you all day because you've been sleeping. All you do is sleep. How you tired? So I saw a um, a Twitter conversation that was being had, and I was like, mm, "This sounds messy. Let me read it because I'm nosy, right?" And so the tweeter, wow, the tweeter. So this person was talking about an interracial romance that they had read. <laughs> it's an interracial age gap romance, or at least book. <laughs> and they said, "Just finished reading this interracial age gap book, and I got questions, like serious questions too." It's called Consolation Prize by Linda Cage, a forbidden men novel. You know what's going on with it and they were interested so he was 18 she was 22 they're college students and she was trying is it i should have stopped when she was trying to explain white privilege to him and he kept sweeping it under the rug and gaslighting her yikes on a bike correct and then said is it really an age gap five years is the minimum in most circles but when it's in this age bracket i don't know so i don't know if that's truly considered age gap people who are more in a romance let me know and someone was like, you should have anticipated some fuck shit with the title Consolation Prize. <laughs> but then what really got me was she had the heroine, the author had the heroine kidnapped and almost raped over revenge. He said black men raped his mother, so he needed to rape her to move on. Like she could have left all of this out. So someone said, did you read the author's note in the beginning? Because that was a huge red flag. And they said, I just went back and read it because I didn't read it before. You are correct. The whole thing is a red flag. And so the author's note in the beginning says, once again, I'm writing a story to honor the request of a reader. A little over a year ago, Miss Sierra Townsend wrote to me, my best friend and I are avid readers and my favorite books usually have white lead characters and black minor characters and they're usually quite ghetto. 
It's a little discouraging when all the couples are with people of the same race when there are so many mixed people in the world. I would love an interracial romance, especially when there are so many people that don't believe in it. I always crave a good writing challenge and this one is another for me because like Sierra, I haven't run across a lot of interracial stories myself. I have no idea what kind of elements are usually in them or not in them. So hopefully I do this one some justice. Fingers, fingers crossed. Here's a little bit of forbidden interracial romance just for you, Sierra. Could you, sir? Uh -uh. And so I'll share this part because they shared the screenshot of the story. And so he smirked when I didn't answer him. Yeah, you remember me. Tilting his head to the side as he continued to watch me, he added, bet you're wondering why I took you, huh? Probably think it's payback for the way you and your boyfriend got me arrested. But no, that's not it. That's not it at all. Then he chuckled. Okay, maybe it is a little. He stood up and spread his arms wide. You probably can't see it from down there, but all this land around me here is my family homestead. We own the biggest damn orchard in the entire state. My parents and brother and I, it was, his voice went breathless with awe as he gazed around him. It was amazing. But as soon as the word hit his tongue, his shoulders fell. Until one of your fucking black brothers raped and murdered my mother when she went to Chicago for a business trip. His entire body shook and his lips peeled back from a weight, back away from his teeth and he gritted them. My father ended up killing himself because of the grief. All the workers ran off, then my brother left. Now it's just me, me and my nightmares. I can't sleep for the fucking nightmares, he screamed, pointing his knife at me as if it were all my fault. Chest heaving and eyes filled with an unnatural glow, he glared at me saying, I've tried drugs and alcohol and sex and violence. None of it fucking works. I still have the nightmares. Another tear trickled down my cheek. Maybe he should try dream catchers or rabbit's feet. Not that I was gonna suggest that, but it had to be kidnapping. So you know what I finally figured out I was doing wrong? He asked me. I didn't answer and really, and didn't really think I had to. The guy seemed to be monologuing just fine without me. I haven't gotten my revenge yet, my justice. That's what I've been doing wrong. His arms went up in victory for coming up with this idea. If I just rape and murder one of his women, all will be right in the world again. Justice will be served. And wasn't it just handy you were the bitch who got me arrested on the very night I came up with the idea and that I got a brief glimpse of your name and address in one of the witness reports in the file they had open when I signed my bond paperwork to get out of jail? It was as if destiny was telling me what to do demanding what I do. <sighs> there's, there's so much. There's, come here, nut butt. Come here. There's so, there's so much. There's so much. One, I love that she said she hadn't seen a lot of interracial romances around. There's a lot. They exist. And it looks like you probably should have read a few before you decided to write your own. Also, I don't care if it was interracial, or that is absolutely fucking bonkers reason to kidnap and rape someone. There are no words. Yikes. Yikes. Oh my God. No. I just had to share that because I was like, the fuck? Too much. Anyway. <laughs> That's it for today because I've been filming for almost an hour and I wanted to shout out a few things at the end that are a little more positive. So Stacey Abrams is going to be publishing a children's book with HarperCollins. Oh, so it says that her first is going to be a picture books and it's called Stacey's Extraordinary Words on December 28th, Popper Collins Children's Book Imprint, Balzer and Bray. Based on Abrams' experience participating in several spelling bees while in elementary school, the story addresses themes of perseverance and bravery. That's gonna be super cute. I don't have children, but I want it. Then also, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, is writing a memoir. It's going to be coming late 2022. Uh, let's see, by Random House, that is sure to be juicy. The quote says, I'm writing this not as the prince I was born, but as the man I have become. I hope he spills all the tea. I want it. And lastly, there was an article in Publishers Weekly that said print book sales soar in the year's first half. Um, so it was just like last year, I think a lot of people were expecting sale, 
uh, print book sales to fall and they did really well last year and so print sales finished 2020 up 8.2 percent over 2019 and that strong performance continued into 2021 with units jumping 18.5 percent in the first six months over the comp the comparable period in 2020. Um, so with the exception of the juvenile nonfiction category all the major publishing categories had double digit sales increases in the first half of the year. Backlist had the strongest gain up 21.4 percent but frontlist sales were also solid rising 12.4 percent. So I will link that Publisher Weekly article down below. I don't think you have to pay to read this one. Uh, who knows. So so those were just up, um, some positive things to add there at the end. But if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Again, check out Izzy at Happy For Now um, for all of her videos in general, and especially if you want more uh, detail on what's going on in Romance Landia. But that is it today for me and this furry baby. I gotta remember if I, I gotta see if I remember and know how to edit these videos. But we hope that you stay hydrated, moisturized, wait, we hope you say blessed, hydrated, sunscreened, moisturized, so ready for summer to be over. Uh, I'm so over it. And we just thank you for all your love and support. Thank you for 25K. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But links to information about things going on in the world, any links that I said I would uh, post in this video would be listed down below that will be listed down below as well as like my social media ways to support my channel if you want to join my patreon right now um we're voting or they're voting on the book that i read and review for august and also our book club book so if you want to check that out it's down below but again thank you for all your love support comments and we'll see you in our next one Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elizabetta, Amber, Heidi, Maria, Serena, Ava, Claire, Kimberly, Carrie, Kirill, Stephanie, Demery, Rainey, Celine. Thank you all. I love you. Bye. Rachel. Oh, look. Bye. Tell them bye. Bye. Yes. Thank you.